you often hear the phrase, you get what you pay for. Now, in life, I very rarely come across something that is straight up black and, black and white. There's always shades of gray. <clears throat> um, and so that, that saying can absolutely be true or be partially true or not true at all. Um, Ganzo knives, for instance, uh, you know, putting aside the uh, ethic, efficacy, efficacy, <laughs> putting aside the ethics of uh, what they do, uh, they they make good tools, good knives for you know twenty twenty five bucks. Uh, so I really don't think that phrase would apply. Uh, when it comes to this tool, however, I think that phrase partially does apply uh, because you know I'm going to highlight the differences between a hundred dollar uh, you know tool that is you know pretty much tippy top dog of uh, multi tools you know they really uh, care about what they're doing and uh, pay attention to detail uh, you know quality versus maybe quantity or uh, you know whatever the case may be um do i think that this is a bad tool after you know after everything i'm gonna show you no i don't uh do i think it's worth it well you know that's a subjective uh subjective thing that's gonna be you know up to the viewer up to the consumer so the first thing we're gonna highlight here you know is a you know a few of the cons we're gonna highlight that i didn't get to in the last video and uh, I got a, you know, I got some, I don't know, offense taking, I guess, because I, I was excited about a somewhat impressive tool coming from a pretty unimpressive company, in my opinion. And so they, uh, <laughs> I got uh, even accusations of uh, being paid by Walmart or something to push a tool. It, it was pretty ridiculous. This channel is not even monetized or sponsored by anyone so anyway all that aside um you know you're gonna get stuff like that on youtube or the internet but here's the first con you can tell those those linings that line right there is clean and crisp and of course right here it is not is that a big deal no but what is a big deal you can tell i've used this leatherman diamond file a lot this file i just really used for the first time and on a mod on this tool that we're going to get into in a second and what it ended up happening is pretty much all the diamond texturing in the middle here just immediately wore off within a minute or two of use you can see there's still some on the uh, outside but the middle is where I was using it and it just wore off so basically that's completely smooth right there it's useless it's useless now everything I'm about to say uh, you know I don't know if this extends to every tool or just mine you know let me know for the folks that have it. second one this was brought to my attention uh, you see the notch is down here that protrudes to this uh, side of the file you can probably see it that is, you know, that's a big deal when you're trying to uh, maybe sharpen a knife with this, you know, put on a edge. This is what some folks do with their Leatherman. And this is, once again, the difference between, you know, uh, a quality tool versus a budget tool. That is definitely not a problem with a Leatherman. You do not feel those notches. Right here, they are visible. And you can feel them. You can even see the lines underneath. You know. So that was a pretty big deal because I, I was you know pretty excited about that diamond file. Uh, and that's probably the worst con so far. But uh, we'll get to the others and then I'll show you what I did as far as the modification. The second con is the placement of this 
pocket clip and I thought it was really cool that they included a pocket clip you know you don't have to buy that extra but it gets in the way of opening up your blades which was really annoying to me I don't see why they wouldn't place it right there now from the looks of it you can uh, move that pocket clip but you're going to have to poke another hole right here in the scale drill another hole what have you for that to work or else because that uh that protrusion from the scale into the hole is what keeps this steady uh so if you want to and i may end up doing that in the future but if you want to you can do that but i, I don't see why they did that uh they did that on the uh, uh mossy oak one too for some reason they just are weird about pocket clip placement but uh, that's the second one. The third one is, and this one really isn't that big of a deal. I really need to get a camera stand. Uh, but it's the plier head, uh, the pliers themselves. These are great pliers, but once again, like uh, with Leatherman, it just breaks so easily. I can break it with my fingers like that um, I wish I could show you with two hands um, you know if I'm squeezing this these player heads uh, with one hand I can you know just open it like that and break this one side pretty easily now of course most of your use is going to be squeezing but sometimes people use the their plier heads to uh, pry something open you know you don't want to pry it open uh, and so that that can be a problem um, but that's uh I guess the last con that I can think of no I'm sorry there is one more and uh, we'll get to that now so uh, this uh, bit extender really nice I like it a lot actually um, but it's got it's got a magnet in there, and that magnet is extremely weak. Extremely weak. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's see if I can get a bit in there. Now, it'll hold this bit well enough, this size bit, because it's a smaller bit, you know. There it is upside down. But if I give it a good jerk, it won't getting to this uh to these bigger bits which you may want to use since uh that sinks in that's a more, that's more weight will it hold yes if you do any type of you know quick movement it's gonna fall out that's annoying um leatherman what they did with their bit extender is they've got a See if I can get it. They've got a wire in there. Got some metal in there, which uh, grabs the bit. And it's much more of a snug fit. This one is much more of a loose fit. And uh, that that's uh, that's disappointing. All right, so we'll go to the uh, mod now. Now here's the modification I did. Uh, it came with the serrated blade on this side and this blade was right here. And so I switched them out. Um, don't know why they would do that, you know, because the pocket clip is in the way of that. And this is gonna be the uh, blade you use more than not. But what had happened was switching them out, this lock would get stuck. You know, you'd have to push the blade down to disengage the lock. And that is a really stiff lock. But anyway, so what I had to do was I I took it off and I used this file right here to uh, file it down a little bit so that it would be smooth disengagement. And that's what took off the, uh, the you know, diamond coating. And I ended up using my Leatherman for the rest of it which was very disappointing. Um, 
but now it it does work and it's easy enough i think it was a t15 i used on these and uh it you know it was a really quick you know uh exchange but you do want to get some uh uh what do you call it the the uh loctite you know for these because they are loctited in place and you want to do that again so that you can uh have a very smooth opening and you don't have to keep it too tight all the time but anyway i just wanted to you see that i cut myself that's embarrassing i just wanted to update you guys because i want to i want to be as objective as i can about this and give you all the information that you may need to know um to make a good purchase but anyways uh i guess that's it for now uh we got some uh, really cool really cool gear coming up uh pretty excited to show you all right i'm out